Good morning, YouTube. Uh, looks like it's gonna be another beautiful day, so I should be able to get a uh, pretty fair amount done to the uh, Beetle chassis. So uh, I'm gonna start this video off with uh, pulling the pans off of this uh, chassis. So I'm gonna flip it over and uh, cut the pans out right next to the seam. And then I'm gonna use an air chisel to uh, chisel off the the last little piece of it uh and you'll see what i'm talking about when i get to that point but i'm probably also going to pressure wash the the chassis before i take the floors off so that may be the first thing that you see i'm gonna pressure wash it then i'll flip it over and uh uh start cutting the floors out all right so the first thing i'm going to do to this thing this morning is uh gonna clean all this uh scrap off the top of it just get a, get all the big stuff off of here then I'm gonna bring my uh, pressure wash up here, pressure wash it, and then I'm gonna flip it over and pressure wash the bottom, and then I'll start cutting the pans out. All right, my son and daughter still refuse to be put on camera, so I have my son help me flip it over. Now I'm going to pressure wash the bottom. All right, so now that I've got it pressure washed, I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the pans out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this jack point from this brace, and then I'm gonna cut the floor right inside the edge of this overlap right here, because that's what it welds to. So I gotta cut it right inside of that seam, and then I, then I can get an air hammer or an air chisel and chisel the last little bit of metal off of that lip. And that's what I'll weld it back to. You can see up here at the front, it's the same way. There's a lip right here, and that's what the floor pan welds to. So I'm gonna wind up air chiseling right behind that lip. But I'm gonna cut the floor out all the way around right inside the edge of that lip just to get the floor pan out of the way. And then I'll air chisel the remainder. All right, so now that I've got the pans rough cut, you can see where I cut it at. There's a seam all along here. So this metal overlaps. So I'm gonna wind up air chiseling all that leftover stuff out. But all along this rail, um, my buddy Rusty told me to leave these in because the ones on the new pans aren't really that great. 
but if I have to if I have to replace it with the one off the other pan, I will because this one looks like it's rusted out. I don't know how difficult it'll be to patch that, so I may I may wind up replacing this one. But now now that I've got that done, I'm gonna wire wheel this, and then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna wire wheel the top, and then I'm gonna start air chiseling. So, by the looks of it, after I cleaned it up, these pans have been replaced before because that's some really shitty welding, uh, if you ask me. Um, that looks like this is going to be an absolute nightmare to get off of here because of how they welded it. So, I have to see how this is going to go. So these have definitely been replaced. So of these pieces that my buddy Rusty told me not to cut out. So I may replace them since they've already been replaced. He told me the original ones are the best, but it looks like this shit didn't line up because they had a whole freaking glob of silicone all across the top of here. So I'll probably wind up replacing these, these pieces as well. Okay, so after looking at this thing a little bit closer, the pan has actually been rusted away from the top of this lip on here this is all that's left of it is right here so i'm going to try and grind this down and clean it up i'm going to grind these little pieces off right here but this is the lip that i'm trying to open up to so that i can weld to so this is this pan i mean i don't know what the hell they were thinking when they were welding these pans in but they did not do a the way that i would do it um I don't know what the deal was with those big old booger welds that are running across the bottom of here, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to start ripping these out, but first, I'm going to cut these brackets off and get them out of my way. All right, so I just got done removing the last little piece off of this rail all the way around on both sides. Uh, it actually came off pretty easy because of how they welded it. Uh, they didn't have good penetration on their welds and it was just barely holding on. So I was able to cut right through their, their welds and it popped right off. So now I'm gonna take and wire wheel this entire edge and clean it up the best I can and then I'll uh, more than likely sand it down, spray it with some uh, weld through primer, and then be ready to put the pans in. Now, I was able to clean up where those seat brackets were. I got a little bit hot in a couple places, but I didn't go through. Um, I'm, I'm probably gonna fill weld this in and then grind it down again because I don't know how thick this is. I don't want to keep grinding and grind through. So 
I'll probably fill weld those little cracks in so that it doesn't look super horrible. But all this gets covered with carpet, so I'm not super worried about it. But I was able to get all four of them cleaned up. And uh, they don't look too bad. All right, everybody, I got off work a little bit early today. Uh, so I'm gonna go talk to my brother-in-law who uh, is the owner of Atlanta Auto Restoration. And uh, I'm gonna go talk to him and pick his brain on uh, what his thoughts are on how I should proceed with this car. Cause I've got a couple different ideas on what I wanna do, but I wanna ask his opinion on what he thinks the best course of action is um, with the tools that I have available. That's the main hiccup. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna make this to where it's something that people watching my videos wouldn't be able to do by themselves if they don't buy specialty tools and things like that. So I wanna make it to where everything that's being done is being done with just basic hand tools and things that the normal average person would have. So I'm gonna go run some ideas past him and while I'm there, I might shoot a couple shots of the, some of the cars that he's got in there. All right guys, I'm back up here at my brother-in-law's shop. I've been working on uh, fixing his sandblaster for him and building a new one. Um, but I'm gonna flip the camera around let you see what cars he's got in here this time. Uh, that's a Porsche 356 right behind me. Super rare. But uh, let me flip the camera around and show you what we got in here. So here is a convertible Cuda. Old Corvette. Porsche. Oldsmobile. Ford Ranger. Pontiac Firebird. Camaro. Bel Air. I'm not sure what that one is. I think it's a Cadillac, but I'm not sure. Could be a Lincoln. And Corvette, Camaro, Corvette, Corvette, Mustang, truck, truck. So. Pretty cool setup they got here. I'm gonna go over here and show you the 356. What's up, man? There's a split bumper Camaro. Got the Corvette. Got a split bumper Camaro. I think it's beautiful. Old Chevrolet pickup. Another Camaro. And then here's the 356. And this is a real deal 356. Uh, you're just telling me that that one quarter panel right there is $4,000. Old Ford. This is this is metal shop. Got an old Bel Air back behind here. So a bunch of pretty cool stuff. Okay, so to sandblast my chassis, I'm gonna have one advantage that most people are not gonna have. I'm gonna use this booth that my brother-in-law has. Um, but it's I'm still gonna be using a sandblaster like what you can pick up at Harbor Freight. Nothing fancy. Gravity feed, vacuum feed, but that's what I'm going to use the same last or this one. I haven't decided yet. That one's a really nice one. That's my brother-in-law's. Um, I mean that one. That one's the same as the one I have at my house. That's my brother-in-law's as well. But I have one exactly like this at my house. So I may I may use this one just because it has a higher capacity. Uh, but we'll see. But that's the only advantage that I'm going to have is I'm going to be using this booth to sandblast the chassis. Other than that, it's going to be the same as if I would be doing it at my house. All right, guys. It's been a couple days since I uh, did all that work to the uh, frame. And uh, it's been raining like crazy out here. And I'm getting flash rust on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just spray it with some primer uh, where I've been grinding on it. And uh, I'm going to let it sit and wait uh, until I'm able to purchase the, uh, the correct paint to, to actually paint the pans and everything. And uh, once I do that, then I'll sandblast it and, and paint it because we're, we're entering the rainy season here. And I don't want this thing to rust worse than it already has. So I'm going to go buy just some spray can primer 
and primer this thing after I hit these couple places that have uh, flash rust and uh, keep it like that until I can afford to buy the paint and the um, rest of the stuff to rebuild the, the chassis It'd probably be in about a week and a half. I uh, gotta wait until I get my another paycheck. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna wind up stopping doing the, the pan replacement at this point until the next video. Um, but while I've got this opportunity, I'm gonna show how to remove the shift rod from the center chassis tunnel. Um, I should have showed it in my disassembly video, but I'm gonna show it now. Uh, Cause I'm, I wanna take that out before I sandblast it. Uh, as far as the heater handles, I'm gonna replace those and the levers and the cables. So I'm just gonna leave all that crap in here when I sandblast it. If they get screwed up, they get screwed up. I'll, I'll buy new ones. But I'm gonna flip this around and show y'all how to take the uh, shifter rod out of the center of the tunnel. So in order to remove the shifter rod, you need to remove this nut and take the uh, uh, swivel joint off the end of the shift rod. You also need to remove these two bolts right here and remove this access plate. Now, if the, if the chassis is still in the car, then you would remove, there's a little hole right there. You can see it, but there's a cover over top of it. Open the hood and show you. But if you remove this cover and that cover right there, that's access to get the shifter out when the body's on the chassis. Um, but since I have the body off the chassis, all I gotta do is take this one access panel off and take the uh, union off the back and then I'll be able to slide it out. Now your shifter bushing, which causes a lot of shift issues, is located about right here. So I'm gonna replace the shifter bushing after I sandblast the chassis. But you can see I'm starting to get flash rust on some of the stuff that I grinded and I don't want it to get worse than it already is. So I'm gonna clean this up again after it dries out. So I'm gonna have to wait until it stops raining to do this. Um, Cause it's supposed to rain for the next two days. So I may have to wait until all this is done and then uh, spray it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this rod out, take that off, take the front cover off and then I'll show you when I'm pulling the rod so out. So I just popped the front cover off and this thing is full of shit. It looks like mice or something have been living in here because there's no reason for plastic to be in there. So I'm not going to dig that shit out with my hands in case there's a spider or snake or anything like that that could poison me. Uh, I'm going to get some pliers and yank all that shit out of there. And then I'll, uh, then I'll pull the rod out. Okay, so all of that shit was inside the frame head. It probably filled it up back to about right here. It was pretty damn full. There was a critter or something living in there at one point in time. But now that I've got it open, uh, you're not really going to be able to see it. But the shifter, I can see it. The shifter rod's up there. I can push the shifter rod straight out as soon as I take the uh, union off the back. All right, so in order to take this off, I had to use a crescent wrench and an 8 millimeter wrench. So 8 millimeter on this side, and then I had to use a crescent wrench to hold these flats. Because this is just a split pin with a coarse thread screw in it. I'll unscrew it so that you can see the, what I'm talking about. It's just a coarse thread screw. And this is just a split tube. It's got a crack down the side of it, but it's just split so that that coarse thread will grab it. And then this thing definitely needs to be replaced that side's just about freaking gone. It had a lot of slop in it. You can see the inside is messed up on both sides. So I'm gonna get a urethane one to replace that with. I'm actually, I'm gonna do urethane bushings on everything. I'm not gonna do OE bushings. I was originally gonna do OE bushings, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the urethane. So, but once you take that out and slide that off, now the rod can just, sh just slide out the front. You have to turn it a little bit to get it past some stuff. So you can see the rod right there. So all I did is just turned it and now I can push it through. All right, and just keep pushing it through, keep working it through and then you'll be able to get it out the front. 
All right, so now I'm gonna continue pulling the, the rod out. All right, let's see if I'm stuck on something up here. Yeah, it looks like I have to rotate it a little bit more. rotated it the wrong direction. You need to have it to where it's facing the... When I pull it out, I'll show you what way you gotta have it facing. Sometimes the end will get stuck on the shifter bracket. Sometimes this end will get stuck in the hole that the shifter rod's going through. And this is my shifter bushing. And you can see it's missing a pretty big chunk of it. Okay, I was holding the bar too high up to, video, to show in the video what I was talking about earlier. But... This, this is the shifter bushing right here. You can see that it's got a pretty decent sized piece of it missing. And it's also stuck to the shifter. It, it doesn't want to come off. I'm trying not to get filthy. I just washed my hands. Um, but the shifter bushing is actually stuck to the shifter rod. And it's, it's supposed to be stuck into the bracket in the body. And then this little piece right here, you can see there's a little back cut lip on it. And this has got a taper on it. Um, it, uh, it gets caught on that bracket when you're pulling it out. But the other thing that I needed to mention or that I was trying to show is that that end right there that the ball of your shifter goes into when you turn it, you need to turn it to the passenger side so that you can get it out to clear the, uh, the throttle cable and so that it can clear the, uh, fuel line. Um, but if you turn it like that, or if you turn it all the way straight up and down, it'll come out without any issue. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, like always, if you, if this video helped you out in any way, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, share, subscribe, let your friends see what I'm doing. And, uh, in the next video, I should be replacing or actually welding in the pans, um, and possibly painting and redoing the finishing the re, re, the res, restoration. Jesus, I can't speak. Uh, finishing the restoration uh, beginning processes on the on the chassis. Um, when I order the pans and the paint, I'm also going to go ahead and order the uh, bearings and bushings for the trailing arms and uh, rebuild the rear suspension. Um, then I'll probably have to wait for a couple weeks and get my money together so that I can buy my narrowed adjustable beam and I'll go ahead and get the chassis completely finished, uh, with brakes and everything before I even start on the body. So, um, please stick around and follow the build and I really hope you guys enjoy what I'm doing. So see you in the next one.